This talk is based on uh, many papers with many collaborators. And uh, the idea that Monte Carlo is useful to learn about string and M theory is not very new, as you can see from this title. This is a very impressive title, and uh, I took it for my talk. Uh, I slightly changed it, though. And uh, our motivation remained unchanged since uh, at the you know, last century. So we want to study quantum gravity uh, by looking at super ion melt. So gauge gravity conjecture, if true, claims that if we can solve super ion melts, we can learn something about quantum gravity. And of course, uh, very often it's very difficult to solve super ion melts, especially when we want to know something which is not protected by supersymmetry, like thermodynamics. Then in such a situation, we should use numerical techniques or numerical experiments, such as lattice gauge theory, to solve this uh, theory, and then we can say something about quantum gravity. And many people are also trying uh, uh, with analytic approach in this uh, kind of thing. And also, I didn't uh, write here, but Marino's talk uh, today was also in a similar direction, I think. So in ADS-CFT correspondence, Type 2B string on ADS5 should be equivalent to four dimensional equals to four super ion mills. But this theory, we can study it on computer in principle, and some people are not trying, but it's uh, computationally rather demanding. So I want to have a computationally cheaper setup in order to uh, learn detail about quantum gravity. So, what kind of super ion mill theory can be simulated on computer? So, this, this uh, theory is written in blue is uh, what we think we can study on computer using Monte Carlo technique. And uh, the theory is written in red, is impossible, or we would say untractable to study with the current knowledge. So here, possible or impossible means without fine tuning. Fine tuning means if your regularization is not good, when you take a continuum limit, you have to tune the parameters so that conti correct continuum limit is realized. And when you have to f perform fine-tuning simulation, it's essentially impossible. And uh, in zero plus one dimension, this is just a quantum mechanics, so zero space plus one time direction, and one plus one dimensional theory. Uh, in this case, uh, any number of SUSY and various matter contents, essentially all kinds of theory can be studied on computer. And in two plus one dimension, for maximal SUSY, we know how to study it, but we when we have less SOSI or we have matter fields, it's hard to study. And in four dimension, four dimensional n equals to one pure ion mills without matter field, it can be studied on computer. And we can study maximally supersymmetric theory, but the SOSI QCD is difficult. And uh, in lower dimension, simulation cost is smaller. And in the higher dimension, simulation cost is larger. It's just because if you go to higher dimension, you need more lattice points to uh, correctly approximate continuum theory. And very fortunately, gauge gravity duality is expected to be true even when uh, the dimension is less than four. So type 2A or 2B string around black p brain background should be equivalent to p plus one dimensional maximal super mills, which is obtained by dimensional reduction from four dimensional n equals to four. And this p can be two was one was zero. So small, as I said, smaller p is easier to simulate on computer. So we study the simplest case, p equals to zero. Then gravity side is type two a string around black zero blame. And in gauge theory side, we just have matrix quantum mechanics, which is a, you know, mat the same as matrix model of M theory. And uh, still, simulation cost increase with uh, when we take uh, n size of gauge group uh, larger. So simulation cost roughly increase with uh, this power. And uh, when we consider thermodynamics, our thermal interference of Euclidean time direction is one over temperature. So if you go to low temperature, it corresponds to larger volume, and uh, you need more lattice points. So simulation cost increase if you go to low temperature. So if you go to larger n or small, lower temperature, simulation cost increase. And in uh, gauge gravity duality, so in super ion mills theory, we have one over lambda. Lambda is two-fifth coupling, gm is squared times n. And we have uh, one over n. We have two 
uh, expansion parameters at strong coupling. And in strings, in string theory side, uh, we have uh, alpha prime correction and the GS correction. And the one by lambda correction corresponds to alpha prime correction, and the one by n cor uh, correction corresponds to GS correction. So if we take strong coupling and the large end limit, this theory reduces to supergravity. So, you know, in that limit, gravity side is simpler, so people they use uh, uh, solve supergravity to learn about uh, this limit of super MU theory. But from a quantum string point of view, 1 over lambda and 1 by n corrections are more interesting. 1 over lambda is classical string correction, and 1 by n is quantum string correction. But at this level, uh, check of the ADS CFT is not yet uh, complete. So first of all, we have to test this conjecture. So the action of diesel brain quantum mechanics is simply this one. So xi, so this i runs from 1 to 9, so it's a, there are nine scalar fields. And uh, potential term is commutator squared, and uh, we have uh, fermions. And uh, this is simply the dimensional reduction of 10 dimensional n equals to 1, or 4 dimensional n equals to 4. And originally, this model was proposed as a matrix model of M theory by Banks, Fischer, Roshenka, Saskin, and in a membrane context, also by Dwight, Hoppe, and Nikolai. And in the context of gauge gravity duality, uh, it should be dual to black zero blame. And it should reproduce thermodynamics of black zero blame. And in this theory, this first coupling lambda is dimensionful. So uh, it has a dimension of mass cube. So it sets the scale of the theory. So effective dimension less temperature is lambda to the minus one third times t. So when lambda is large, then t effective is small, it's equivalent to smaller t. So strong coupling is equivalent to low temperature, and their simulation cost increase. Anyways, we have to go to, uh, you know, uh, the region where computation becomes hard. There is no free lunch. And this theory has a problem with a flat direction. So in this action, we have a commutator square term here. So this uh, is a potential term, but uh, when xi and xj all commute, there is no potential. And uh, there is a flat direction. And uh, when we don't have supersymmetry, then this flat direction is lifted by quantum uh, correction. But in this case, because of uh, supersymmetry, this flat direction survives even at quantum level. So somehow, we have to tame the flat direction when we, if we want to study this theory. And uh, this uh, flat direction, so Simulation-wise, it's, you know, it's a drawback, but uh, as physics, this flat direction must be there, and uh, that's a very important part of this theory. So naively, people say eigenvalues of the matrices corresponds to position of the zero blanks, and the black zero blank, or black hole, must be the eigenvalue, uh, uh, bound state of uh, the zero blanks, or bound state of uh, eigenvalues. Okay, and uh, at the same time, if uh, these zero blends are, you know, separated far away, because of supersymmetry, they don't feel the force with each other. This is a flat direction. But of course, uh, in this theory, this theory should include not just a black hole. It should also include gas of these zero brain, and also it should have two black holes, three black holes, any kind of state should be included. And uh, such many states can be included because there is uh, this flat direction. But anyways, for the present study, we have to study this, we want to study this black hole phase. So one has to restrict path integral in order to study black hole. This is a, a technical challenge. And so let us start with the confirmation of gauge gravity duality at classical string level. So how, it, in this case, it's easy to tame the flat direction. In string theory, this black hole is stable if we ignore GS correction. And in the gauge theory side, corresponding statement should be that bound state of eigenvalue should become more and more stable as n becomes larger. And actually, we can confirm it numerically. So we start uh, from the eigen, uh, bound state of eigenvalues, and when n is small, it can collapse quickly. But as n increases, that uh, lifetime of that bound state becomes longer and longer. And when n is large, say 15 or 16, essentially during our simulation, we never see flat direction. So our solution here is just take n large enough. And it's okay because now we are 
looking at large N limit. So this is the simulation result uh, from 2009. And here our N is 17. So it's uh, big enough and we don't see one of any correction. And if I give a talk to a lot of theorists, they ask why it's 17. And the reason is probably because of the memory problem. Uh, when we changed the N to 18, compiler didn't work. And, <laughs> and this capital lambda is a momentum cutoff. Here, we don't use lattice prescription. We work in momentum uh, space. And uh, lambda equals to infinity is continuum limit. So lambda equals 8 is closer to continuum limit. And uh, here, I plotted the energy of the super MUs. Uh, system or mass of the black, energy of the black hole versus temperature. Here T and E are actually effective dimensionless uh, quantities, uh, which is, you uh, know, dimension is uh, adjusted by this factor. Okay, so low temperature is strong coupling and high temperature is weak coupling. So if we go to low temperature, simulation result from the mills should go closer to supergravity result. And the supergravity result can be calculated uh, from a uh, well-known metric uh, by Horowitz and Strominger. And that's uh, 7.41 times t to the 2.8. Such a strange power can appear because, uh, you know, because of this factor, naive power counting doesn't work. And so it seems that uh, at the strong coupling, uh, gauge gravity duality is correct. And then this difference from uh, supergravity result should be string alpha prime correction. And actually, as I explained in the uh, next few slides, we can really fit this uh, difference using alpha prime correction. And uh, so deviation from the strong coupling limit must be alpha prime correction. And in type 2A string, the alpha prime correction should start with alpha, alpha prime cube. OK, alpha prime and alpha prime squared should be absent. And uh, so. Uh, so alpha prime is dimension four. So natural dimension less expansion parameter is alpha prime divided by curvature square, curvature radius square. And we should take a cubic power, okay? And this quantity in a supergravity limit can be estimated just uh, looking at the metric. And we know that this combination is t to the 0 0.6. So we have cubic power, so we have t to the 1.8. And the leading is t to the 2.8. So we add 1.8 to 2.8, then we get 4.6. This is simply power counting. And uh, so we, no, we can expect that the correction should be proportional to t to the 4.6, but uh, in gravity side, it's not easy to calculate the overall coefficient. So we determined this coefficient uh, by fitting numerical data from super and mills. So in that sense, uh, this uh, number is a prediction from super and mills. And in order to really reproduce this power 4.6, Okay, we can, uh, you know, uh, take a de uh, deviation from supergravity result and uh, take log log plot. Then we can really see, uh, we can fit the result using a straight line with slope 4.6. That means uh, power t to the 4.6 is really realized. And if we go to weak coupling, higher order of alpha prime can appear. So it can deviate from straight line. And uh, at the low temperature, uh, regularization artifact appeared. So uh, because uh, low for low temperature, we need a larger lattice, but our lattice is not large enough. So finite cutoff effect appears at low temperature. But the inter at the intermediate region, we can correctly see this power law behavior. So uh, alpha prime correction is reproduced. So we want to see one by n correction, which corresponds to quantum string uh, effect. And actually, we had a pretty good result. And uh, as you know, Peter Voigt is number, fan, number uh, one fan of string theory, and he really liked our result, and he ad kindly advertised our uh, result as uh, this week's hype in his web page. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so in gravity side, Hyaktake recently calculated the one of n correction. So this is one loop of string. This is two loop of string. So. 1 over n quotient of 1 over n squared is uh, expanded by t to the 0 0.4 plus t to the 2.2 plus da da da. So higher order terms corresponds to higher order in alpha prime. Okay, and uh, also these uh, quotient a, b, c are unknown. He couldn't calculate. But he calculated uh, minus 5.77. Okay, and uh, 
I cannot check his result because you know I'm not good at that, that kind of calculation, but uh, I want to reproduce it from SuperM Mills. If Maldasena conjecture is correct, then it should be reproduced. But here, this A and higher order terms are not known. But here, because uh, these terms correspond to higher order in alpha prime, uh, if we go to very small t, these terms are negligible. So we go to very small t and uh, try to, uh, so we take t small enough so that these terms are negligible and uh, reproduce, try to reproduce this term. Okay. And the problem is flood direction. <laughs> okay. So I, I said at large enough n, flood direction disappears. But we have to see one way in correction. Okay, we have to go to small i and otherwise we don't see one point correction. But then flat direction comes back. And it is unavoidable because, you know, we really want to see unstable object evaporating black hole. So practical solution is, first we introduce some potential term which push back eigenvalues to, into black hole when it tries to, you know, uh, run away from black hole. And we take this cutoff values slightly bigger than black hole. Then, uh, so distribution of uh, trace xy squared divided by n, which characterizes the size of the eigenvalues, becomes like this. So here we see clear peak, which should correspond to black hole. And here we see the, the tail. So our cutoff value is here. So here we don't have any configuration. But here we see the tail, which means uh, you know, eigenvalues are trying to run away from black hole. And it's not clear where the border of black hole. Yeah, it should be around here, but it might be around here. So how can we separate it from a, a black hole from other configurations? So we try to calculate the uh, energy using, uh, by introducing cutoff for, the, for this value. So here I calculated the energy using only these configurations. Here I cal calculated the energy using, only using these configurations and so on. Then of course the uh, result depend on the cutoff value. So, but uh, likely we can see clear plateau here. So we don't know where the border of the black hole, but uh, it should be around here. I don't know exact position, but the result doesn't depend on the detail, the concrete value of the border. So we just uh, assume that the value at plateau is the energy of black hole. This is simply working a hypothesis and I don't know how to justify it theoretically, but I think it's a reasonable assumption. Then this is the result. So we studied t around 0 0.1 and for n equals to 3, 4, and 5. And uh, here we observe negative specific heat. And uh, it probably corresponds to the emergence of 11 dimension. So this black zero brain at very low temperature should uh, be connected to Schwarzschild black hole for in 11 dimensions, so negative spec heat can appear. And uh, then, uh, so around the z t equals to 0 0.1, specific heat turns from positive to negative, and uh, probably this is related to black hole black hole string transition, I guess. Uh, so when 11 dimension appear, first black hole solution in 10 dimension is uplifted to you know string-like solution in uh, 11 dimension. But when M theory cycle becomes large, it pinched off and uh, becomes 11 dimension black hole. I guess it's uh, related, but I'm not sure. And if we subtract prediction by Hakutake to the next two leading order from the simulation result, so x axis one by n to the fourth we can really see nice straight line behavior. So somehow one over n to the sixth correction cannot be seen, but the remaining part is really proportional to one over n to the fourth. Okay, so one over n squared term is correctly calculated by Hakutake. And we can uh, determine the coefficient of one over n squared by numerical fit, if we like. Then uh, this is a result determined from n equals to three, four, and five. And here I had only S u n equals to three and four, so I don't have error bar. And anyway, simulation result and uh, dual gravity prediction completely agree. So it seems that uh, the CFT or gauge gravity duality is correct, at least to the next leading order in one by n expansion. And uh, for other, I said, uh, so I talked about this case, but uh, I said other theories can also be studied. Uh, so what is uh, going on. 
So in zero plus one dimension, Cartier Wiseman and Cardo did the independent test at large n, and the result is consistent with ours. And we can also calculate the other quantities like Polakoff loop, a two point function. We can do many things. And in one plus one dimension, Cartier, Joseph, and Wiseman uh, study the thermodynamics at finite temperature. And in that case, uh, as uh, pointed out by many people, probably including our chairman, uh, black hole, black string transition can be captured by this theory. And they claim that they uh, uh, observed that transition from a gauge theory. And also other theory can be uh, studied, and uh, we can say something quantitative about quantum gravity. And in two plus one dimension, lattice regularization doesn't work. And we have to use a fuzzy Sophia formulation. And uh, it's a Maruda Sena, Sheki Javali, and Van Lam's donk uh, uh, gave a nice uh, regularization procedure for this case. And in their case, so two dimensional space is realized by fuzzy sphere. So space time is embedded in matrices. So large lattice corresponds to large n. So when we take large n, we can realize three dimensional theory. And uh, unfortunately, no numerical simulation has been done so far in this case, but uh, so we can do. And in four dimension, probably most people are interested in this case. So that is simulation with U2 gauge group is going on by American group. And all, they also told me that they are trying, uh, in this case, with lattice, we have to perform fine tuning, but they say they can do that. And they are now trying to really fine tune the parameters and also they are studying U3 and U4. And the large end volume reduction, so-called Eguchikawa reduction, can also be used when we are interested in only large end limit. And uh, that's uh, some uh, interesting quantities are calculated by Japanese group. And for 4D n equals to one pure sub-pyamir's case, there are many works. And uh, basically, they are trying to uh, observe uh, gauge in condensation. And uh, simulation code, in this, for such business, usually we, you have to write simulation code by yourself, but uh, that's the most boring part, and the writing code itself is not physics, so that's the reason why not many people jump in this field. So we are planning to provide an open source simulation code for zero plus one dimensional theory, and all the version uh, is available upon request. If you're interested in, please email me. And the uh, American group, led by Cattrall, uh, uh, has a, downloadable uh, open source uh, from this web page. And our conclusion, oh, this is a conclusion slide which I use for talk to nuclear theorists. So I try to motivate them, but maybe I was a bit agitating. <laughs> so Martha Sena conjecture is correct at finite temperature, including one by lambda and one by any correction. So lattice or nuclear theorists can study quantum gravity by studying field theory. So th if they apply their method to solve uh, super and mills, then they can say something about quantum gravity. And uh, that's uh, what, uh, you know, not string theories cannot really do. So I said Rick is a machine for quantum gravity for that purpose, and uh, maybe you can even occupy Princeton. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm half lattice, half string theorist, so I must be nice to string theorists too. So this is my conclusion slide, so string theorist. <laughs> so Maldus conjecture is correct, okay? So it's useful, we should learn something about quantum gravity. So let's find good problems in super mills which nuclear or lattice theories can solve by using their method. And at the same time tells us about quantum gravity. And uh, even a qualitative argument in a pure mills would be a good starting point for lattice theories. So your ideas will be appreciated. It's my final slide. <laughs> <laughs>